Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Master English Podcast 21. Yes. Thank you so much for downloading this podcast. Let's Master English podcast. Share it with your friends. I sincerely appreciate that. Now, today's FUDcast. What? Today, this week's podcast will be fun. I think I said FUNcast or FUDcast. Whatever. Um, This week's podcast will be fun because I have a challenge. Now, in order to really understand this podcast, you need to know what a pun is. P-U-N. A pun. So, I've talked about puns in my DDM lessons, and I think on an E-cubed, we talked about puns before. Um, But I want you to check the dictionary. Understand what a pun is. Why? Because in today's news story, there are five puns. And in Country Shane's fact section, there are two puns. So altogether in this podcast, there are seven puns. And all the puns are related to eggs, E-G-G-S, chicken eggs, turtle eggs, uh, dinosaur eggs, eggs for breakfast. Mm. So, now the challenge is, and here's the challenge, everybody, the first three people to email me all seven puns will get one month of DDM Open for free. Da, 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 da. Free DDM. Yeah, I'll give you a month. Maybe I'll give you two months. Yeah, I think I'll give you two months. Seven puns? Should I do seven months? No, seven months is too much. Uh, two, <laughs> well, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, that's the challenge. There are seven puns in the news article And Coach Shane's fact. You tell me all seven puns, you get DDM open for free. Two months for free. Is that cool? Yeah, it's it's not easy. Good luck, everybody. And, uh, well, enough chit-chat. Let's begin. Officers are scrambling to find who poached 15,000 dozen eggs. An 80-foot semi-truck was stolen with all 180,000 eggs inside. No security cameras were in the vicinity of where the truck was parked and then whisked away. The thief may have gotten over everyone easy for now, but police are sure they'll crack the case. Hmm, okay. Maybe you understand that this story is about many, 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 many eggs that were stolen. Uh huh. Well, you're right. That's that is the story. Let me read it again, a little bit slower. Officers are scrambling to find who poached fifteen thousand dozen eggs, and. 80-foot semi-truck was stolen with all 180,000 eggs inside. No security cameras were in the vicinity of where the truck was parked and then whisked away. The thief may have gotten over everyone easy. For now, but police are sure they'll crack the case. That was really slow. 
All right. <clears throat> so let's go to the first sentence. Officers are scrambling to find who poached 15,000 dozen eggs. Now, in America, when we say officers, we usually mean police officers, cops. And some people say pigs, but pigs is not a nice word. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, officers, officers, police. So remember, police, a policeman is singular. The police or police refers to the organization or the entire group. Uh, the force is the idea. So officers are scrambling. To scramble means to, to hurry, to do something very quickly. So officers are hurrying to do what? What are they hurrying to do? To have coffee and donuts. <laughs> no, 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 no. Officers are scrambling to find who poached 15,000 dozen eggs. So they're trying to find somebody. Who? Who are they trying to find? The person who poached. P-O-A-C-H-E-D. To poach something means to steal something. S-T-E-A-L. So, officers are scrambling to find who poached, who stole, S-T-O-L-E. What did they steal? 15,000 dozen eggs. Oh, my goodness. So, in America, when we buy eggs at the supermarket, we usually buy them in a carton, C-A-R-T-O-N. And there are various carton sizes, but typically a carton of eggs is 12. There are 12 eggs inside. And a dozen, a dozen, a single dozen means 12 eggs. So here it's not just one dozen eggs, it's 15,000 dozen eggs. How did they steal so many eggs? That's incredible. So the first sentence again, officers are scrambling to find who poached 15,000 dozen eggs. The next sentence. An 80-foot semi-truck was stolen with all 180,000 eggs inside. Okay, now I understand. So, where were these 15,000 dozen eggs? They were in a truck. But not just a regular truck. This was an 80-foot semi-truck. So an 80-foot, why don't we say 80 feet? It's a distance. Well, we're using it as an adjective. So we have to say 80-foot. So 80-foot. An 80-foot semi-truck. 80 feet, everybody, is about 24.4 meters. So 20, a 24-meter long truck, that's a big truck. And big trucks in America are typically, typically called semi-trucks or semis. Or semi-tractor trucks, tractor trailers. There's many expressions, but semis or semi-trucks is very common. So semi, S-E-M-I, semi-truck. A semi-truck is a large truck with a large trailer behind the truck used to haul things, H-A-U-L, to haul, to carry things. Now, these semi-trucks can hold a lot of things. In this case, this semi-truck was holding 15,000 dozen eggs. Semi-trucks are also called 18 wheelers, 18 wheelers, W-H-E-E-L-E-R-S, because these trucks typically have 18 large wheels. So they're huge. They're very, very common in America. You see big, now I used to live in Korea and I saw big trucks in Korea, but not like in America. America has some unbelievably huge trucks. Huge. These trucks are so big that the truck part 
actually has a bed inside. So the man or the driver, you know, if he's driving across America, he can stop someplace and sleep in his truck. Yeah, I wonder if they have showers. Anyway, uh, the best thing to do, go to Google, Google, and uh, search images and just type S-E-M-I-T-R-U-C-K, semi-truck, and you'll see some pictures, and uh, they're huge. They're cool. So once again, an 80-foot semi-truck was stolen. Okay, so the thief stole the truck with all 180,000 eggs inside. So in the truck's trailer, in the back of the truck, that's where the eggs were. But before, I said 15,000 dozen eggs. And now I said 180,000 eggs. Now that makes sense. 15,000 multiplied by 12. 15,000 times 12 equals 180,000. Now many Americans will actually say 180,000. Even more Americans will say a hundred and eighty thousand. So in daily English, they're all correct. Now, actually, you should just say one hundred eighty thousand, but eh, everybody says it. Uh, most people say it with an and one hundred and eighty thousand. So that's fine. You can say that. That's that's not exactly right, but everybody does. So since I teach descriptive. English rules, not prescriptive English rules, and is acceptable. Okay, so I'll read the two sentences again. Listen carefully. Officers are scrambling to find who poached 15,000 dozen eggs. An 80-foot semi-truck was stolen with all 180,000 eggs inside. No security cameras were in the vicinity of where the truck was parked and then whisked away. So I think you can guess the meaning here. No security cameras. CCTV, those cameras that look for, you know, crime. No security cameras were in the vicinity of where the truck was parked. In the vicinity, V-I-C-I-N-I-T-Y. To be in the vicinity means to be near something. To be in the area of something. So no security cameras were near the truck where it was parked. No security cameras were in the vicinity of where the truck was parked and then whisked away. W-H-I-S-K-E-D. Whisked. Whisked away. Now we have a phrasal verb. If something is whisked away, it is taken away. Shoom! Somebody took it away. And this can mean stolen. And that's what it means in this case. Stolen. S-T-O-L-E-N. So that sentence again. No security cameras were in the vicinity of where the truck was parked and then whisked away. Oh boy. So no security cameras, that's going to be difficult for the police. So the next sentence. The thief may have gotten over everyone easy for now, but police are sure they'll crack the case. So the thief, the burglar, the criminal, the bad guy, may have, might have, gotten over somebody. To get over somebody has lots of possible meanings, but in this case, deceived. The thief may have deceived everyone for now. But I didn't say that. I said the thief may have gotten over everyone easy for now. Now, grammatically, it should be gotten over everyone easy. Easily, not just easy, but easily, but eh, for this time, I said easy. So just to remind you, if you want to say 
he got over everyone easy. That's actually wrong. You should say gotten over everyone easily. Why do you think I intentionally made a mistake? Hmm, maybe it wasn't a mistake. What could the reason be? Good luck. I'm not going to tell you. But once again, the meaning is the thief may have deceived, D-E-C-E-I-V-E-D, deceived everyone easily for now, but police are sure they will crack the case. Crack, C-R-A-C-K. In this case, crack means to solve. Police are sure they will solve the case. And the case in this case means the incident, uh, the incident of the thief stealing the truck with the 15,000 dozen eggs inside. Got it? Whew. So we have some interesting words once again. Scrambling. Poached. Uh, scrambling. Uh, let me give you the spelling for scrambling. S C R A M B L I N G. Scrambling. Officers are scrambling. Police are scrambling. Poached. P O A C H E D. Past tense, so it means stole. S T O L E. Dozen. D O Z E N. Twelve of something. Eighty foot. That is an adjective form, 80 dash foot. 80 feet is equivalent to approximately 24.4 meters. Semi truck, S E M I dash T R U C K. A semi truck is a large truck with a large trailer used to haul things, H A U L, to carry things. In the vicinity of, in the area of, near, near something. There is a Starbucks in my vicinity. Near me, there is a Starbucks. Yay! (sighs) Whisked away. W-H-I-S-K-E-D. Away. Whisked away means to be taken away. Shoom. It can also mean to be stolen. S T O L E N. To get over somebody. To deceive somebody. Gotten over, deceived. D E C E I V E D. And finally, crack. To crack a case. Solve. S-O-L-V-E. Those are the key vocabulary words. I will read the story two more times. The first time, a nice moderate NPR style speed. And the second time, normal. Normal American speed. You guys ready? Here we go. Officers are scrambling to find who poached 15,000 dozen eggs. An 80-foot semi-truck was stolen with all 180,000 eggs inside. No security cameras were in the vicinity of where the truck was parked and then whisked away. The thief may have gotten over everyone easy for now, but police are sure they'll crack the case. Officers are scrambling to find who poached 15,000 dozen eggs. An 80-foot semi-truck was stolen with all 180,000 eggs inside. No security cameras were in the vicinity of where the truck was parked and then whisked away. The thief may have gotten over everyone easy for now, but police are sure they'll crack the case. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Eggs are loaded with cholesterol, especially the yolk. Your brain is made of cholesterol. Therefore, eggs are good for your brain. (laughs) Studies show that eating eggs regularly does not increase your risk of heart disease. 
That's exactly what I wanted to hear. <laughs> More eggs, please. Well, it's time for me to exit. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Uh, thank you very much, Shane. Yes, eggs are loaded with cholesterol. That's right. Eggs do have a lot of cholesterol. Cholesterol, C-H-O-L-E-S-T-E-R-O-L. And he said that most of the cholesterol is in the yolk. That's right, Y-O-L-K. Now, many Americans do not pronounce the L. They just say yolk, yolk, yolk. But some areas of America do pronounce the L, yolk, yolk, with an L sound. The yolk is the yellow part of the egg. And uh, eggs are good for the brain. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Your brain is made of cholesterol. Uh, and there's lots of cholesterol in eggs. So do your research. Don't trust country Shane. Always do your research. And remember, uh, we do send this information if you sign up for our email. All right. So country Shane made his exit. E-X-I-T. It's time for us to exit this section and enter the Q&A section. That's question and answer section. Our first question comes from Kimmy in Iran, and she said, That's my jam. That's my jam, yo. What does it mean? That is my jam. J-A-M. Ah, yes. This is very common in pop songs, and I'm thinking of the Black Eyed Peas. I do like the Black Eyed Peas with their uh, Will I Am. He's pretty cool. Uh, That's my jam. That's my jam. That is my song. So the word jam, J-A-M, means song. Let's jam means let's make music or let's play music. That's my jam. So if you're listening to the radio and your favorite song comes on the radio, you can say, oh, that's my jam. I love that song. Oh, yeah. Kimmy, what's your favorite jam? For me, my favorite jam is... Ah, uh, boy. Uh, Rubber Ducky by Ernie. I'm serious. Next question. This question is from Lily. Thank you for making this wonderful video. Um, I have one problem. What is the difference between this podcast and your daily videos, E-cubed, and which should I start with? So... So I think Lily wants to study English. She wants to study English with us. That's great. And I think she's asking, should I start with daily English, E-cubed, or should I – sorry, a motorcycle just went by – or should I start with the podcast? Well, Lily, I think you should start with everything. Now, if you really want to study the language – Studying every day is the best. So I have many YouTube channels, and I highly recommend, if, especially if you're busy, if you only have 10 minutes, 10 minutes a day, I highly recommend you study DD. DD stands for Daily Dictation. And you can go to www.youtube.com slash Daily Dictation, that's D-A-I-L-Y-D-I-C-T-A-T-I-O-N, Daily Dictation. And I have over 250 free lessons, and they're all short. It's a good introduction. And if you have a little more time, then listen to E-Cubed. E-Cubed is another channel on YouTube, as you know, and... Those videos introduce a phrase or an expression that is very common in daily English or is sometimes funny and common in movies. So that's a great place. And the podcast, it's only once a week. And the idea for the podcast, what I really hope people do with my podcast is listen to it 
when you go to work or go to school. Listen to it as you exercise or wash dishes. Listen to it when you go to bed or when you wake up. That's what I want you to do. So when you're doing something else, I want you to listen to the podcast. And and don't just listen to the podcast once. Uh, Listen to it several times. Me, I love podcasts. And I listen to several podcasts. I have a couple of favorites. And I listen to the same podcast over and over again because... I don't really concentrate when I'm listening. I'm usually doing something else. And sometimes you miss something interesting. So I like listening again. So Lily, do it all. My first recommendation, daily dictation. If you have more time, E-cubed. And absolutely listen to the uh, weekly podcast, which is this, Let's Master English. And if you really want to master English, if you're really serious and you've done DD, then of course I recommend you join DDM. But you have to pay. (laughs) But that's my job. I mean, I I need you guys need to support me. Um, I don't have many students, (laughs) but uh, maybe one day, maybe one day. Uh, Okay. Next question is from Mikhail in Moscow. The question is about the words compliment and compliment. What do they mean, how are they pronounced, and how are they used? (laughs) Well, compliment and compliment. Okay, so these two words are different. They're homonyms. They sound the same. The first word, compliment, C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T, compliment. The second word, compliment, C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T, Compliment. They sound the same, but the meaning is different. So, compliment with an I means to say nice things to somebody. So, it's easy to remember. I say nice things to you. I compliment you. So, the compliment with the I is I say nice things to you. You can remember it like that. Okay? So compliment saying nice things. Mikhail, you are a very handsome young man. I complimented Mikhail. I said something nice. I praised Mikhail. Now, compliment with an E is also easy to remember. Compliment in this case, means to complete something, to make something whole, to make something better. So, to complete, C-O-M-P-L-E-T-E, complement, C-O-M-P-L-E. So, with the E, complete, complement, it makes something whole, W-H-O-L-E. It it makes something better. So, for example, I'm wearing... uh, a nice suit, and then I put on a perfect tie, and the tie is a perfect combination. And you can say, oh, Shane, that tie, T-I-E, necktie, that tie really complements your suit. The tie and the suit fit together and become one. It makes your clothing one. It completes your clothing. It looks great together. Oh, Shane, that tie really complements your suit. That tie looks good with your suit. Okay? So once again, it's easy. Compliment with an I. I say something nice. Compliment with an E. It completes the ensemble. It makes something whole. Okay? By the way, the last word there, ensemble, E-N-S-E-M-B-L-E. I think that was right. Okay, uh, and we had a, now, last week I had an E-cubed expression uh, where I taught the word savvy, S-A-V-V-Y. Great expression, very, very good expression. And in my lesson, ooh, I was, I was being mean. Sometimes I said savvy at something, savvy at, S-A-V-V-Y, at something. Sometimes I said savvy in 
something and sometimes I said savvy about something. Oh, so Shane, how do we do this? Savvy at, savvy in, savvy about? When do we know which one to choose? Oh boy. Yeah, this is a tough question. So I'm going to give you a basic rule. This is not the perfect rule, but this is the basic rule which will help you in almost every case. Savvy at doing something. I-N-G. Savvy at programming. Savvy at cooking. Just get that gerund in there. I-N-G. Savvy at doing something. Savvy. Now, another case would be savvy at this. Oh, you're savvy at this. You're savvy at this. That's it. Okay, that's possible. And we can also say, I was savvy at 25. When I was 25 years old, I was savvy. So savvy at age is possible too. So savvy at three situations. Savvy at ing. Savvy at this. I'm. Oh, you're savvy at this. Or savvy at that. That's possible too. And savvy at age, a certain age. Now, savvy in. Now, when we say in, I want you to think like inside. That's the idea. Savvy in a deep subject. Okay, so a subject that has a lot of levels. So, for example, savvy in listening skills. Listening skills is a huge area. You've got linking, cancellation, dialects. Uh, yeah, it's tough. You've got different types of English, academic English, daily English. You've got country English. You've got the news. It's a very deep subject. Savvy in business negotiations. Somebody who can negotiate very well is savvy in that area. Savvy in that area of business negotiations. It's a big field. People write books about business negotiations. Savvy in the kitchen. Savvy in the classroom. The person really knows the kitchen, knows how to cook, knows how to organize, knows how to use utensils. Savvy in the classroom. The person is good at student management, is good at writing uh Lessons is good at teaching, is good at uh, decorating the classroom. It's a deep subject. It has many areas. Savvy in deep subject. And the final one, savvy about. And it's very similar to savvy in, but the subject, you can think that maybe it's smaller. Savvy about a particular subject. So, for example, savvy about the latest research in global warming. Some people are very savvy about global warming. They know all about the latest research. Some people are savvy about social media. They know how to utilize social media. I wish I were more savvy about bicycles. But I know a guy who's very savvy about bicycles, and he knows everything about bicycles. So once again, savvy about and savvy in are very similar. Um, I guess the best way to check should you say savvy in something or savvy about something is do a Google search. Yeah, it's kind of tricky, but uh, they're great great questions, and I appreciate it. And if you leave examples, um, I'll do my best to to fix any mistakes that you have, okay? Uh, It's time to say goodbye, everybody. But before I go, I want to remind you of our challenge, free DDM open lessons. And I also want to say hello to some of our new listeners And the first guy I must say hello to is Eric Pinter. Hi, Coach Shane. I'm your new member. I'm so happy to become a member of LME. Eric joined our Google Plus community. Our Google Plus community is called Let's Master English, and you can join too. 
Eric says, please do me a small favor. Please introduce me and my small country, Slovakia, in the next podcast. Uh, I listen to LME while fishing. Oh, Eric, I love fishing. I love fishing. Slovakia, beautiful country. I've seen pictures especially of the lakes. It looks like a great place to go fishing, Eric. I'm very jealous. You know, we do have a listener. I can't remember where he's from, but uh, his grandma is a great catfish cook. She's very savvy about catfish. She knows everything about catfish. She knows how to cook it. She knows how to clean it. She knows how to catch it. She knows how to raise it. Uh, But yeah, what kind of fish do you catch, Eric? Personally, I'm not really a, a catfish fan, but I haven't had our listeners' grandmother's catfish. I like walleye, perch. Mm, northern, especially pickled northern, bluegills, ooh yeah, sunfish, all panfish are great, white bass, fantastic. You guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Those are typical fish that we uh, catch in Wisconsin. I do love fishing. So Eric, thank you very much for joining the family and welcome I also want to say hi to Duong Hui. Duong Hui. I'm guessing that Duong is from Vietnam. Um, he says, I got all of your eight DDM lessons and they're really useful. I studied them over and over. Thank you very much, Duong. Everybody, you can get the eight free DDM lessons if you go to www.letsmasterenglish.com slash try DDM, T-R-Y DDM. And Duong says, so I want to ask you where I can buy another eight lessons. I just need eight more. Well, Duong, send me an email. And my email address is dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. That's dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. Dot com. Send me a message, Duong, and uh, I'll get back to you on that. Thank you very much. Uh, we got some other stuff too. Mohammed Riza Madadi. Hi, Coach Shane, my dear English coach. How's it going? Fine, thank you, and you. Uh, how can we say or write condolence to somebody? Okay, so, so Mohammed's question is basically, how do we uh, say, so, so somebody's, for example, somebody's mother died. What can we say to that person? Uh, Mohammed, the best thing to say in this situation is, my heart is with you. That, that's what I say. My heart is with you. Um, and I just leave it short and simple like that. If you want to add something, you can say, my heart is with you. If you need anything, please ask. And then leave it like that. Keep it short and simple. That, that's what I do, Mohammed. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for the question. And thanks, of course, for listening to the podcast. And we have Rishab Vashisht. I hope my pronunciation was okay. He says, he, she, he? Oh, I'm not sure. Sorry. Uh, wonderful podcast. Keep it up like this. And can you add some direct and indirect sentences? It's useful for all of us. Thanks, buddy. Well, thank you, Rishab. I appreciate that. What do you mean by direct and indirect sentences? Be specific. If you're asking for grammar, nope, ain't gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Uh, There are so many excellent grammar podcasts and grammar websites and grammar books. So uh, those, those men and women are so much better than me at uh, teaching grammar. So I don't touch it. Uh, there's, and I've talked about this before. There's two styles of language. There's prescriptive language methods, which they teach, they focus on grammar, proper structure. And there's descriptive methods of teaching a language. And that focuses on the typical daily usage. And that's what I do. 
I shy away from grammar. I, I grammar is really important, everybody, especially when you're writing. Grammar is essential, and of course, when you're speaking, you need to have uh, proper grammar. But uh, I'm not the best person to teach it, so so I don't. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that, that's just reality. And let's check out iTunes. We got one message from Lynn V. Lynn V. T. Thank you so much, Shane. And we answered Lynn's question last week about virgin and virgin. So, Lynn, I hope your pronunciation has improved. And we got two ratings. We got one from France and one from Italy. Uh, I don't know which is which. Oh, no, we got more, too. There's another one from the United States. Anyway, uh couple five stars and a four star rating. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. On iTunes, the rating system is very important. Uh, it helps other people find our podcast. And I finally want to introduce some people from uh, the YouTube channel. This is uh, youtube.com slash coach Shane's ESL. Ingrid Basher says, great podcast. Thank you very much. Mr. Arab says, thanks, coach, for everything that you are doing for us. My pleasure. Mohammed Ahmed says, my name is Mohammed. I am from Sudan. Cool. Right in the heart of Africa. All what I can say is you are a fantastic teacher and I wish your dreams come true. Mohammed, thank you very much. I wish the same to you, buddy. And we have Daman Sharma. Hi, Shane. I'm from India. I want to know, is the S silent in specific? One more thing. What is the difference between specific and particular? I'm wondering if you'll answer my question in your next podcast. And I might be the first person from my country who has asked you a question. Uh, You know what? From India... Daman, I think you are the first person on the podcast to ask a question. I'm not sure, but I think so. So, specific. Is the S silent? No. Keep the S. The S might be very short, but keep the S. Specific. 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 And what's the difference between specific and particular? Well, basically, none. They're the same. They mean the same thing, Daman. Uh, However, if you make them adverbs specifically and particularly, then the meaning is different. But the roots, specific and particular, they mean the same thing. But the trick is collocation. In some situations, we use specific. In other situations, we use particular. Um, so, there are several collocation dictionaries that uh, are excellent. And I have one in these boxes behind me. Um, and I don't know the name of it, but I, I want to dig that out. So, in the future, uh, I will recommend my favorite collocation dictionaries. Collocation dictionaries, everybody, they teach you how, or they teach you. Uh, which words go with which situations? Um, that's a terrible definition. Anyway, collocation dictionaries. Look it up online. Excellent, excellent things. So once again, Daman, specific and particular, the, the meaning is the same. And the usage is almost interchangeable, generally. But sometimes uh, they collocate differently. Uh, Let me see. Anything else here? That is it. Once again, thank you so much, everybody, for listening to my podcast. And remember, this podcast, LME21, has seven puns in it. Five puns in the news, two puns in Country Shane's facts. The first three people to email me all seven puns will get not one month, but two months of DDM Open for free. Ba-ba-ba-ba! Yay! It's pretty cool. I'm excited. 
My email address is daily dictation members at gmail.com. Send me an email. Several people have access to my email account, so send, I should say, send us an email. But I'm usually the one who opens all the mail. Um, but send me an email with your with with the seven puns. You don't have to give me an explanation. I want to know the seven puns. So basically, everybody, what I'm asking for is seven expressions or words. Okay. I, ho- I hope you understand. I hope at least one person finds the puns. Uh, but I think we'll get three. I hope so. Uh, you guys have a fantastic week. Thank you again for listening to Let's Master English. And remember, Let's Master English. Let's Master English.